Chapter 1. What is flow? If you have experienced a moment when you were totally involved in what you were doing, a time when you felt strong and confident, not worried about yourself or about failing, you've probably experienced flow. But what is flow? Well, first of all, flow is a state of consciousness where one becomes totally absorbed in what one is doing, a state in which people are so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter. So, flow is about focus? More than just focus. Flow is a harmonious experience where mind and body are working together effortlessly, leaving the person with a feeling that something special has just occurred. So, flow is about enjoyment? Although a person in flow might be too busy to notice it during a performance, enjoyment is often the most well-remembered and treasured aspect of the experience. The enjoyment that flow provides is often described as the lift. Because once you get it, it just lifts you up towards a superior performance. So, flow is about optimal performance. Athletes use a wide range of terms to describe the performance aspect of flow. Some mention the feeling of invincibility. Others meet high challenges with unwavering confidence, allowing previously unimaginable events to occur. So, flow is about peak experiences. Although a high-level performance is important, flow does not depend on it. And flow offers something more than just a successful outcome. This is because flow lifts experience from the ordinary to the optimal. And it is in those moments that we truly feel alive and in tune with what we are doing. So flow is exclusively for sports performances. Flow is a state with universal qualities that is experienced by people in a wide range of contexts. A great game of tennis, a fabulous downhill race is similar to how you feel when you're reading a gripping novel playing a close game of chess, or other events that require mental effort. Despite the enormous differences between the activities, the experience of people being totally involved in what they are doing is characterized by a common set of features. Surgeons performing a life-and-death operation, chess players working out their next moves, or climbers scaling a mountain peak, all describe a consistent set of feelings that psychologists like Csikszentmihalyi identify as flow components. In part one of the book, we describe 10 of these components and illustrate them with real-time events and study cases of elite sport athletes. It's here that we'll see how flow works in the brain, how it massively accelerates athletic performance. Part two of the book focuses on the experience of flow, what athletes report when they're in flow, and the science behind these feelings. Part 3 of the book provides you with the mindset needed for flow. And finally, in part 4 of the book, when we figure out what these athletes are doing to reliably produce this state, then we can apply this knowledge in our domain. Despite the unusual them at the center of the stories, this book is really about us, you, and me. Case Study 1. The Impossible in Surfing it was a sunny day in 2000, when surf legend Laird Hamilton was about to surf Chopu. Chopu sits a quarter mile off the southwestern coast of Tahiti. Unlike the deep water big wave breaks of Mavericks and Pihai, Chopu explodes laterally onto a highly shallow, razor-sharp reef, producing a barrel that has accurately been compared to the Lincoln Tunnel. It's also the heaviest wave in the world, the most mass, the most power, the most ferocity. The website Surfline might have said it best. This isn't your father's perfect wave. And unless seeing your next birthday doesn't rank on your list of priorities, it isn't yours either. Hamilton was about to ride that wave, but the swell was big when he got to the beach. Too big. The day started out with us being told Chopu was completely unrideable, recalls Hamilton in a video interview. They said, we don't go out there when it's like this. But all the people who do what we do, who do the things that no one has before, we're not the type to accept that answer. Either way, we have to try it. And by we, he means, of course, himself. Hamilton tucked his feet into his toe straps, grabbed hold of a tow rope, 
and headed out of this famed lineup. Hawaiian big wave charger Derek Dorner was piloting the jet ski. I remember letting go of the rope just as Double D, aka Derek Dorner, yelled out, Don't let go. I remember seeing the magnitude of the wave as it stood up, a double wall, and then putting myself into position, and the time just stood still. Then it was like I had an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other as I thought about what I should do next. And they were saying, jump off, stay on, jump off, stay on. Eventually, <laughs> the angel won, and I stayed on. It was like a dam bursting, like someone had dropped the seafloor by 30 feet, and the ocean was desperately trying to find level ground. So much force was being generated that Hamilton, as he was trying to get into position for the tube ride, found himself getting sucked up the wave's face. To hold steady, he had to reach down to the outside of the surfboard and drag his right hand in the water. It was the perfect move and the only reason he's alive today. But here's the thing. No one had ever made that move before. Laird had to drag this backhand, says former surfer editor Sam George in Stacy Peralta's film Riding Giants. On the opposite side of the board, to keep himself from getting sucked up in that hydraulic, in the middle of that maelstrom, how did his mind say this is what I have to do? No one has ever ridden as Hamilton on that wave before. He couldn't practice. So it was his imagination dealing with that unimaginable and coming up with the plan spontaneously. And then things got really crazy. That unpredictable and suddenly appearing killer wave cantilevered into the reef and the resulting thunderclap splash went off like a megaton bomb. Shock waves pulsed into the channel. The spray shot up almost 60 feet. As far as anyone could tell, Hamilton had been swallowed whole. Seconds later, though, the mist parted, and out he rode, tall and triumphant. It is no exaggeration to say nothing has been the same since, continues George. Laird's wave at Chopu was the single most significant ride in surfing history. The Millennium Wave changed human perception of what is possible from a surfing perspective, but it also changed Laird Hamilton. I think the only limits are the limits we put on ourselves, Hamilton continues. I think there is really no limit to what we're potentially capable of writing, as long as the equipment keeps evolving and the evolution of our technique keeps evolving. Hopefully, one thing is clear. Flow is that evolving technique. This may raise up an important question. What is flow exactly? <laughs>